Hello and welcome back to Around the Block. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to another episode. It's one of those days, it's a hat day today because just lockdown haircut needed definitely and I don't trust anyone else to, to do it with some the dog clippers at home. So the hat's on today because just my hair's getting out of control. Controversially, it's on forwards this time. Usually it's on backwards because I just don't think, I look a bit stupid I feel with hats normally. I feel like if it's backwards it looks slightly cooler on me hats but I, I, I just don't suit hats as you can probably tell. Either way, we've got a really big episode coming up for you guys today. We've got Kukuriki in the Serbian Cup semi-final. We then got Vojvodina who is second in the table and then we've got the Eternal Derby, the Belgrade Derby against Red Star who are third in the table. So three huge games coming up for you. Obviously, it's only been a couple days since you guys were last here for that 2-0 win over Proletar and we sort of had a bit of an introduction to the club now and we kind of know what's going on here at Partizan. So really this episode is just about playing these games and getting to know some of these players a little bit better I must say. So we're going to dive straight into the Serbian Cup. Um, so the semi-finals is Kukuriki versus us and then a team called Radniki against Havor and as far as I'm aware we must be the favourites to win this cup. We've only won it twice since this whole save file started, including once last season. Rad have been particularly unlucky, coming runners-up three times there. But in real life, Partizan have won it for the past four seasons in a row, so well done to them. Now, because we've got such a small squad and not an awful lot of depth outside of the first team, the lineup is almost the exact same as it was, as you saw last episode. Two changes have been made. We've brought in this guy, Milo Kovjevic at the right back position because our normal right back has got himself injured he's out for two to four weeks so this guy is going to be filling in in for today's episode he's not very good uh, I assume he'll be leaving the club well I'm going to try and get him to leave the club very soon because he's not particularly good at all I can't really see him reaching that three and a half star potential I, if he reaches that it might be good maybe it's, maybe not get rid of him maybe put him in like the, the youth team or the or the B team or something like that but he's not a first team quality player but he's the, he's the best we've got right now at right back so He's going to have to play for us. We also need to say welcome to Nikolic in the attacking midfield role. And somehow, I completely didn't realise this player was at the club. He was on the bench in my last game, despite him being actually the best player at the club. So somehow he slipped under my radar. I'm not entirely sure how I did that, but he's the best player at the club. An attacking midfielder got some really nice attributes where they matter. Really big, high attributes. So... I think he's going to be a really good player for us and hopefully scores a of goals for us. Now, I did mention in yesterday's episode that uh, three players were up for renaming in the Patreon because I felt bad that we've had no actually good youth intakes for a little while. So, these three players have all been claimed and renamed. First off is the striker, Gishlan Conan. Thad Davis has taken him. Thad, thank you for your continued support on the Patreon. We are going to be renaming this chap, though, to, I think, a, a fantastic name. Thaddeus Igalo is now our star striker, and I think that's a, a fantastic name. Thaddeus is just beautiful. So welcome, Thaddeus, to the club, and, of course, thank you, Thad. Starting at left-back is this chap called Saba Marcus, but will no longer be called Saba Marcus, because, Harry, thank you very much for your continued support on the Patreon as well. We're going to be renaming you to what I think is a, is a really fantastic name, Harej Bunts oh, I've messed it up there, haven't I? Harej Buncevic, which is a great name, I think. So welcome to the club and thank you, of course, Harry. And finally, you've not been able to see him in action yet because he's injured right now, injured for a little while, another three weeks or so. But Marko Simovic is being renamed to what I think is potentially the best name I've ever seen for a player. Welcome to the club, Jez. Jezevich. What a name that is. So, uh, Jeremy, thank you ever so much for your continued support on the Patreon as well. Massively appreciated. Once you're back from injury, you'll be in that first team ASAP as Jez Jezevich. So, if you want to get involved in the Patreon, there are links down in the description. I'd massively appreciate it if you checked it out. And it's because of the Patreon people that we've been able to buy a new microphone and things like that. It's like the money gets reinvested into the channel and uh, we've got nice shiny new toys to thank for it. Right then, enough waffling. Let's get into the games. Kickoff is upon us in the Serbian cup final i'm a big fan of that logo for the serbian cup as the pitch is ridiculously so long here at kukariki so i need to hide the match stats look at that logo for the wow that is a can we see it any bigger somehow profile can we, i want to see if it's bigger and i just how oh, i can't quite it just looks like a, a a dragon or something i think it might be a lion on a football with some gold around it i think that's what it is actually but it looks like a cool logo either way free kick for kukariki though the first real test we've had to face and that one goes over the bar it's a very, not much going on in this first half at all. And actually, Kukuriki are dominating us, playing a very similar, for, in fact, the exact same formation to us, pretty much. Almost exactly. That's a little worrying, actually. 
Maybe we need to change things up a little bit. As a corner comes in for Kukariki, cleared, headed back in the middle. Good save from Schwab there. Can we launch a bit of a counter-attack here and score a goal just before half-time against the run of play as uh, names that I can't pronounce? I'll have to give some nicknames to some of these players, I think, once the uh, trans window's finished or something like that. Because I assume we'll get rid of a lot of these players, but I do want to give some of the harder names nicknames for example but we've got a, a great ball forward to Thaddeus Agalo come on Thaddeus gets around the oh, nearly gets around the keeper good shot just saved either way uh, aggressively at half time far from pleased from what I've just seen we need to step things up a little bit in this second half let's in fact go to attacking actually let's do that I'm not quite sure we weren't on attacking before if I'm honest with you we need to do that but uh, we are coming forward right now Asimovic into the guy that I can't pronounce shoots and I've just told you he's not a very good right back <laughs> or a good left back but he's just scored an absolute peach of a goal there. He's listening out, isn't he? He knows that he's going to be relegated down to the B team at some point in the near future. So he's trying to stake his claim to be the number one right back, even though he's never going to be the number one right back. It's great control. It's a great shot. It's a fantastic goal, really. Oh, I think we've got a bit of a meme on our hands already. Milo, Milo Kovic. Oh, we'll ignore the J in the middle of that. Just Milo Kovic, that's what we'll call him. Either way, we are winning this semi-final now, which is absolutely fantastic. Let's drop down to a bit more of a positive stance instead and look to make some changes. Who's not playing well? Who's looking tired? The guy that we cannot pronounce, even his first name, Militin. Actually, that's not too hard to say, is it? But we're going to take him off anyway uh, in the attacking midfield, right-hand side, and we'll bring on Boris Kristic on. We'll, we'll give him a go either way. I think we introduced him to you last episode. Of course he is. He's the 12 year old who just looks far too young to be playing football. Either way, the attacking midfield on the left hand side isn't playing very well. So we'll bring on Boya Merol as well. Uh, again, he's another striker who's a bit old, not so good. On 25 grand a week, we need to sell him ASAP because that is far too much money for how good he is. So we need to sell him, but oh God. This team is a bit of a mess in some areas. Like, obviously, it's good because it's it's top of the table and we've oh, almost got ourselves a second goal there. We've almost got ourselves to the cup final. So, obviously, this is a very, very good team for Serbia. But in my opinion, I'm looking around this team. I guess it's got... Out, it's, just out, it's just there's no depth. There's no depth to the squad outside the first 11. There's not really any depth. So, I'm not quite sure how they managed to do it and avoid injuries and uh, bits of bad form. But... We need to turn this team around, in my opinion. We can make this team so much better, in my opinion, I think. But with less than 10 minutes to go in this cup semi-final, I'm feeling pretty confident as a free kick floated into the middle is put in the back of the neck by Tristic, uh, but it is just allowed for offside there, so you hate to see that. Throw in four as they're resulting from that somehow as we get the ball in the middle, cleared, and is it going to be one final counter-attack for Kukariki? Are they going to score right at the end of the game to send us to extra time or a replay I'm not quite sure how it works oh the ball just put wide there that was very unlucky for Kukariki but as I say four minutes of time to go and I think we've got ourselves into a cup final barely having to do anything so Partizan win the Serbian cup semi-final you love to see it 38,000 pounds for winning that and I must say all right we've played two games so far we've got seven league games to go and a cup final so that's 10 games in total 10 games time, we could have two trophies in our trophy cabinet. I feel like we've got very, very lucky here at uh, Partizan because we can win those two trophies and that will just boost our reputation massively and we'll get all the credit for it. Anyway, Vojvodina and Red Star coming up. And just to remind you of the Serbian Super League table, every team plays each other twice, then the league splits in half for like the, the championship group and the relegation group. And right now, we're three points clear of Vojvodina in second and seven points clear of Red Star in third place and 12 points clear of Kukariki. So... I can't really see us dropping lower than second, but watch us do that now. But if we beat Voivodina today and Red Star, the title's surely going to be ours, and that would just be beautiful. I must say, Red Star, it looks like they've fallen away in recent years. And I can't I can't believe it as well. They rejected us. They didn't even offer us a job interview, yet Partizan weren't actually that keen. If we look back to the interviews, they weren't very keen on giving us an interview because they didn't think I'd make the most of set pieces. They seemed to love set pieces. They were like, make the most of set pieces. And that's actually in our club philosophy, isn't it? Uh, if we look here, <laughs> it's make the most of set pieces. I'm not entirely sure how we do that, but they, they didn't think I did that. And they were very unsure if they should offer me an interview because of that. But they've given me the job. Obviously, I, I proved to them that I, I could make the most of set pieces. That seems to be their biggest gripe for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. But, uh, but yeah, Obviously, Red Star turned us down. Partizan are taking us. 
and I think Red Star are going to rue that decision. So here comes the game against Voy Vadina. If I'm honest with you, I don't want to change the lineup at all because what we've got out there is the best lineup in terms of what, what from what I've seen from from star ratings and looking at player player attributes and stuff like that. It's the best lineup, so we're going to stick with it. But again, it's worked well so far. We've not conceded any goals so far as well in our first two games, so I don't really see any reason for it to change. So let's go for it. Right then, kickoff is upon us. Voivodina, you're going down. All right, you're going down, lad. They're playing a fairly defensive formation as well as Niklic puts it in the area. And oh, we've just put that one over the bar. Let's get the match stats back up now because this pitch is actually normal size at Partizan, which is good to see. Uh, already dominating the proceedings as it stands right now. And that's what we should be doing. If we get a win against Voivodina, that's going to put us... Uh, we're currently three points... Uh, apart aren't we but then we'll go uh, three points clear won't we so there'll be six points clear which would be absolutely fantastic again i forgot to change the actual tactics on my tactic screen to attacking i have to do that in the game I remember to do that after this game finishes because we need to be a bit more attacking in these sort of situations as kukuriki are beating red star or oh, if red star lose to kukuriki that would be absolutely massive for us because that would help us out an awful lot i must say as uh the first highlight of the second half, only 30 seconds into the second half, is Voivodina looking to come forward with the ball. It's a good ball forward in behind the defence, and they've almost taken a lead, but good goalkeeping there. Let's not have any issues here today, lads. All right, let's not have any issues. We're 11 shots to two shots. We're dominating proceedings. I am slightly concerned, though, as Kukriki go 3-0 up against Red Star. Red Star are not winning that game, which helps us out massively, I must say. Uh, but we are having lots of shots, but not making the most of them. We need to start scoring some goals, otherwise I'm going to get a little bit concerned as uh, Buntsovic comes forward into Nikolic, across to Meyer. Meyer back out to the guy we can't pronounce whatsoever, as he nearly gets tackled, but gets it into Milokovic, into Meyer once again. Nice passing play. Lukovic, Thaddeus hits the post and can't quite get the rebound. That's the best chance we've seen all game. I feel like we're going to rue this. Like, we're going to miss some big opportunities and, and rue this fixture. Get creative, okay? 10 minutes of getting creative, then we'll have 10 minutes of getting getting passionate or something like that. Uh, but it's not, get creative's not worked. Red Star pull a goal back. Corner coming in for, for Voivodina. Cleared, but cleared not very far. As Voivodina, with only their second shot on target of the day. Hmm. Not what we needed whatsoever. Uh, show some passion. We're on attacking already. Um, inside forward. In fact, let's wing it. Put him on a winger on attack. That might work a little bit more, maybe. And have these wing backs on attack as well. <clears throat> Thaddeus not playing brilliantly. So, Boya Mayoral, show us why you're earning £25,000, please, by getting on the pitch, being an advanced forward, and scoring some goals. That would be quite nice. 15 minutes then to uh, grab a goal. Otherwise, we will be going level on points of Voivodina and that is not what we wanted in all of this uh get creative very attacking we've had the opportunities we're just not getting the shots on target we and I said this earlier I literally said it earlier if we're not scoring the goals and we've had all these opportunities we're not going to win the game and it's happening right now Lukovic in the area across the Boya who can't score his goal oh dear me imagine if we come in here and bottle the championship for uh, for partisan that wouldn't be good would it wouldn't be good the thing is we're still in the driving seat still in the driving seat as it stands we're still top of the table so that's handy i assume it's goal difference maybe we'll have to double check what it's all sorted on as lukovic in the middle collected by the keeper and i think that is going to be that as the clock ticks down voivodina gets an important win you hate to see it red star have they pulled back a draw in their game as well should i just have a quick look at i think they've just pulled back a draw red star they have done, scoring the 89th and 90th minute. Fair play to Red Star there, but I am not happy with that result. And now we've got Red Star in four days, which we, we really do need to win. We need to win that game. I can't, oh, am I going to bottle the championship for Partizan? And then we lose to Red Star in the eternal derby. And then because of that, Voivodina go ahead of us and automatically every single Partizan fan hates me because I've bottled the title and lost to our biggest rivals losing the title in the process thing is i can see that happening which is awful so this is the big one then the big one really it's called the the ct derby in game uh, i sort of know it as the eternal derby i hope it's still called that I, or unless i'm thinking of something completely different but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the eternal derby or the ct derby as it is in here this is the biggest game in serbia i know for a lot of fans of 
like Red Star and, and, and Partizan, they say we don't care where we finish in the table as long as we just beat the other team. So I could be in big trouble if we lose this game, like really big trouble. They did go 3-0 down to Kukuriki, who we managed to beat, but they did bring it back to 3-3 at the end. So we've got to be at our very best in this particular game. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not sure what's going to happen, if I'm honest with you. Interestingly, our right winger, who we cannot pronounce, is suspended for this game. Uh, and apparently the next best right winger we've got is actually Igalo. So we'll move Thaddeus over there and we'll bring this Borja mayoral guy on there. Make him an advanced forward instead of a pressing forward because that's what he likes a bit more. Swap those guys over like that. And again, I'm not making any more changes because I just... I'm stupid probably. It's, it's probably stupid to do that, isn't it? But it's... I've done it now. I can't change it. So here we go. Welcome to the Eternal Derby. Partizan versus Red Star. If you've not seen any footage from these kind of games, just like Google or go on YouTube and type in Partizan versus Red Star because it is just an insane game with insane atmosphere, with insane fans, uh, probably just fanatical fans more than anything else. But we've taken the lead here, which is a great sign. We've actually made an opportunity to count in this game. So as long as we win this game, absolutely fantastic. Mladen Lukovic with the goal in that one. Excellent start to the game. You love to see it. Uh, Red Star playing the same shape as us, but they're playing defensive midfielders rather than actual centre midfielders. So we're going to have a lot of space in our midfield, I feel. Their CDMs are going to sit back quite a lot. So I feel like we're going to have quite a lot of space in the midfield to try and do something, but not have a lot of space on the wings, apparently, because that was a very good ball forward, and that was a very good shot from Tedic there. He could be a... Could we try and sign some of these players? He looks quite decent as well. Do you reckon... How bad would it be if we bought some players from Red Star? Like, would they just be pelted with stones still, or something like that? Frimpong! Frimpong is playing for Red Star. What a man he is, as he gets across in the middle. And that Tedic guy is there again. He looks dangerous, doesn't he? We've gone to the corner, though. We scored from the previous one, and we've nearly scored from that one. Good chance for us. But the highlight looks like it's going to continue as Red Star hoof this out from the back. Milo Kevich with the ball into Koz Kozek. Into Thaddeus Igal. I can say that name. Thaddeus Igal is an easy one to say. Thank you for making that easy for me. As Boya Mayoral puts it just over the bar. Yeah, Frimpong. He's here. But it's not actually. Is it the same Frimpong that's like the Frimpong that everyone sort of. I feel like there's two Frimpongs and this isn't the one I'm thinking of. Yes, I'm thinking of Emmanuel Frimpong, not this guy, which is a bit of a shame, really. You hate to see it. But as we head into half time here at the Eternal Derby, I am. I'm pretty confident that we're doing well and we're going to win this game. 1-0 up, a good position to be in. How are Voivodina doing? They're drawing with Kukariki. If they can draw, that would be superb for us. And it gives us that slight little bit of breathing room at the top of the table should we win this game. And of course, they end up drawing. Hopefully they lose it. That would be quite nice. But if we can get back on track here today with a win... I'm pretty confident we can go and win every other game because we've got Kukuriki and then all these teams below and I feel like we should be winning those games. as oh, nearly another goal for us there. Oh, I've just realised as well, I've just looked at my screen and there's like some fuzzy thing below me. It's because my uh, camera isn't quite high enough. It, that was filming part of the back of the, the monitor, but because of the chroma key on the green screen, it, that's a bit bizarre. Sorry about that. I don't... Ugh, that's terrible. As, oh, would you have the man sent off? Oh, I think that's more terrible if I'm honest with you. Uh, in that case then, uh, Nikolic come into the midfield and we're just going to bring everyone back a little bit to... I mean, Thaddeus can't really play there, can he? Can can Kristic play there any better? Kristic? No, he plays even worse. Okay. Well, we might have to just leave Thaddeus up there as a bit of a link and hope for the best with the rest of this. Mm, okay. Okay. As a, a free kick comes in and it's... Oh, it's gone in the back of a net as well. <sighs> Well, this is not going to plan. Come on, then. Come on. We've got 20 minutes to bloody just hold on in this game. You hate to see it. <laughs> this really is not going to plan whatsoever. And here come Red Star. Here they come. The eternal rivals in the eternal derby. We're a man down. And here comes Frimpong in the middle. Cleared. They're not very far as Tedic and with another shot. They still have coming forward. It's a penalty now. Oh, you've got to be joking me. You've got to be joking me. As Voivodina have taken the lead in their game as well. Tedic scores. Uh... <laughs> oh, for God's sake. This is not good. 
This is far from ideal. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I don't know what to say other than just oh no at this stage. This is just... <laughs> this has been just an awful week of playing football manager. An awful week of playing football manager. Sacked from... Uh, from... <laughs> Sack from CSK Moscow. In, in the Arsenal save on stream, we uh, we lose 5-0 to Wolves, 3-1 to Brighton, but can beat Bayern Munich 4-1 for some bizarre reason. Uh, and this time, we've we've lost two games that we had to win, and now we, we're bottling bottling the title. Luckily, Voivodina, Kukariki equalised in the 80th minute, 89th minute. So we're only one point behind Voivodina. Oh, we need them to slip. Red Star, you, please do us a favour and win that game. So I'll be honest with you, uh, not great, not great today. Uh, at least we are in a cup final though, which is good. Um, so next episode, we'll play that cup final, but we'll probably have a bit of a run-in on these. I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do with these games yet, but uh, we'll do something with them because, oh my God, we're bottling the league, aren't we? I can't believe it. Well, thank you very much for uh, tuning in for this one. <laughs> it's not quite what we wanted today at all. Um, but there we go. That, my, my complaints about the squad have been... It's not my fault. It's the, the entire squad's fault. My complaints about the squad have been entirely justified because I said we've got no depth in the squad. The squad's not good enough. There's no quality outside of the first 11. And it's been shown today as we've... We've lost. Anyway, uh, join me tomorrow for hopefully a bit of redemption, winning the cup, winning the league somehow. Uh, but... A difficult journey ahead. But either way, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, if you have done, drop a like in the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.